Good afternoon, my friends. Welcome back to the channel. Hitchhiking Yeti here. Today, our adventures brings us to Southport, formerly known as Smithfield. Pretty cool little bit of history. This used to be Smithfield, and then they changed it into Southport, wanting it to be a port city, but actually, it never become a port city. Wilmington become the port city, and it's still to this day known as the port city, but I still love Southport just the same. So, today's adventure is going to consist of my little buddy right here, that right there, that is my high boy electric scooter. We're gonna be using those wheels to navigate the streets of Southport to move a little bit more quickly and on point. There's a lot of people here, so we might have to, you know, dodge and weave a little bit. Hopefully, no squirrels will run out in front of us. And we are going to have quite a good time today. We're gonna to look at some home fronts, some filming locations for different movies, and a few historic locations. I would like to I like to look at new stuff when I come to towns, and I've been to this town quite a few times, but I always like to feel like I can find something new to do. And today, I'm, I actually want to go see the Brunswick County Jail from 19, the early 1900s. I think it was built in like 1904, and it's not too far from here. So we're going to ride up there and look at that. Now I think it's actually a museum that has some really weird hours. It's not open all that long or that many days a week. So you got to get kind of lucky to find it. And the day is it's actually closed. So I can't even go inside, but I can see where the old jail was. It's kind of cool. And uh, so I really am looking forward. A lot of good filming locations today. Look out, we have, a note. I know what you did last summer. We have Safe Haven, which I have documented a full filming location video here in Southport about the movie Safe Haven. I will put a link down in the description below if you've never seen that before and you're a fan of the movie. Definitely check it out. I think it's really cool. I love filming locations. So uh, yeah, that's what we're going to do today. And we will be using my little friend here, the High Boy Scooter, as we cruise around town a little quicker today on the electric scooter. Should be a lot of fun. If you're ready, I'm ready. Let's begin. So right here off of East Moore Street, we have the old Smithfield Burying Ground. Dates back to 1792. And it is really easy to get to out right here off of East Moore Street. If you're coming from the Fort Fisher Ferry, you'd be coming from that direction. And you can, people actually park all along down here. They got parking places and a nice little pathway here. But you can come out here and kind of walk around the old burying ground, checking out some of the gravestones. They really got some cool stuff back there. I have walked back there before. We're not going to dig and kind of walk back here today because this video is not about that. But I do want, this is a cool thing. If you're into this type of stuff, you're here in Southport, the old burying ground, I think you will find it a lot of fun if you're into this type of stuff. I love finding old graves, especially from the 1700s and stuff like that. So a lot of good stuff back there. But the next thing I want to look at, I think is a little bit further down this way and we're going to head in that direction. And I'm talking about the Brunswick County Jail from 1904. Well, that wasn't too bad. Right over there is the old Smithfield burying ground. And then right here is some uh, signage. It says East Nash Street and North Rhett Street. We are going to be on the corner of that. And right here it is. This is the, the old Brunswick County Jail. Look at this magnificent tree out here. Man, that thing is big. I love these old trees. Kind of walk over here and check out the old Brunswick County Jail. Don't you love this sign? Look at that sign. That is awesome. Built in 1904 to replace the old city jail, which was destroyed by a fire. Used until 1971 when a new jail was erected to the rear. Present home of the Southport Historical Society. And this is it. And yet, yeah, unfortunately, the day I was correct, it is closed. But look at the bars on the windows. And I think when you come here, you can actually check out like the old cells are still in there. You know, it is kind of a museum now, but they still have, look at all these cool like bricks that people have bought, I guess, to help raise money to keep this place going and get it fixed up. The old jail museum closed. Please come again. Please come again. It says 1230 to 330. So yeah, that's a pretty short window. Three hours, Wednesday and Saturday, April through October. So keep that in mind when you do come here to the Brunswick County Jail, dated 1904. Pretty awesome looking. And then right over here, I notice they have some photo ops. I guess you can like put your, put your hands in there like you've been captured. Put your head through that and if you want to. I don't know if I'd want to really do that or not. That's really not my thing. All right, 
pretty cool looking it looks like they got a little garden over here to this on this side of the building with some like really pretty flowers I don't know a lot about flowers my wife does my mom of course does but these are very nice They're very beautiful really really nice looking all right that was pretty cool seeing the old Brunswick County Jail now we're gonna make our way back down here to East Moore Street and take a right and uh, one of the oldest churches in town is right down here and we're going to stop and take a quick look at that so uh all right my friends i have made my way back over here to east moore street and we're just going to keep on cruising down through here and we're looking for one of the oldest churches here in town so i'm going to show you where that is tell you a little bit of history about it on this absolutely beautiful day in Southport and right here we are at St. Philip's Church established in 1741 and look at this beautiful tree that stands right in the front of this church this thing is awesome this is such a beautiful location here on East Moore Street in Southport this church has some pretty cool history it says originally built in 1768 and burned to the ground just a few years later by British soldiers in 1776. This church was one of the first churches for the new Smithfield Settlement, which is now, you know, Southport. The current structure was built years later. So the one we're looking at was built years later in 1843. And despite some new additions, the church still retains its original mid 19th century architectural detailing which makes it a really awesome looking place. As you just heard, <laughs> oh, we got some bells, man. We made it perfect timing. Yeah. You know, you ain't in, a, you ain't in the presence of a church until you have the bells ringing. So this is it. If you want to look at something cool and historical, come here to the St. Philip's Church in Southport. And who knows, maybe you'll be lucky like me and have the bells ring. All right, my friends, we made it over here to East Bay Street now, and we're going to make our way down East Bay Street. And I'm going to take you over here to the old fort and uh, talk to you about that a little bit, because that is a great place to come to town if you want a little history about the town, and especially about movie history. They have a lot of good information in there, so we're going to make our way down East Bay Street now and check that out. Man, we are setting sail down this hill. <laughs> this is such a beautiful area. You see some people out here fishing. Uh, man it's a full house this week look at all the people that's parked out here on the waterfront right on Bay Street very very nice a lot of people enjoying this weather here in Southport we just cruise up this hill right here and then right here to the right that's where we're gonna go that is it that building right there Fort Johnson Johnston Fort Johnston and right there is the beautiful waterfront area here in front of Fort Johnston. Is that not absolutely beautiful? What a great area this is. I love that tree right there. But right here is the Fort Johnston building established in 1746. And this here is a great information center for you to go to and get all kind of pamphlets and get to see a lot of behind the scenes stuff or where a lot of things are hidden around town. A lot of good stuff in here. It talks about all the movies and TV shows that have been filmed here in Southport. I highly recommend visiting this place. This is a really good place. And then right here behind it, we have the North Carolina Maritime Museum, which they do not allow me to film inside. But uh, that's another place I highly recommend you going if you come to Southport and you want to see some really cool stuff. They have tons of cool stuff in there for you to see. For sure. All right, let's keep it moving. We're going to head on down Bay Street a little bit further and get down to where some of the, the eateries are. Some really good places to eat some seafood here in Southport is located down here on this waterfront. We're going to check that out now. And look at all these beautiful homes, these waterfront homes here in Southport. Very pretty. Really good timing as we're out here in the waterfront area. You can see the pier right there. Some people out there doing some fishing. But right out there past that pier is the 
is the ferry that will take you over to Ballhead Island. Which I still say we're going to do that. I don't know when. I keep saying that every time I come here to Southport and video. I really want to go over there and show you guys around. And if it's all possible, I mean, we might, we might have to go over there and like totally rent a golf cart and try not to wreck it. But I really would just like to take my scooter. But I don't know if that's possible. I don't know if they allow that or not. I need to call them and get a little bit more information about that. But that could be a, a fun thing, having the scooter over there on Ballhead Island. But if I have to rent a golf cart, I will totally do so. Okay, let's keep on moving. We're a little bit further. We're going to make it down there to the waterfront area where the restaurants are. And some filming locations will start to rear their heads. Man, speaking of restaurants, I can smell some, some fried fish right now. And maybe some shrimp. Popcorn shrimp. Oh, man, all that good old calabash food like that is so good. I can smell a lot of it coming from my restaurant right back there. All right, right down here is the American Fish Company. And this is a really cool filming location for Safe Haven. This is Ivan's in the movie. I've definitely covered this before in the past. And then right here behind us is another restaurant, which is not a filming location, but it's called The Frying Pan. And there's also another uh, filming location for Safe Haven. It's right here on this very beach. Right on the other side of this pier, they used to be like this white picnic table, and that is where Katie, there was like a point in the movie where Katie is sitting on that picnic table, kind of contemplating things of her life. And it was filmed right there on the other side of that pier. Obviously, the white picnic table has uh, long been gone. That was a long time ago, but that's exactly where it happened. And this right here was Ivan's back in the day, and they, they, they definitely celebrate it because they got a safe haven poster on the side of the wall, and it still says Ivan's right there. Pretty cool. All right, my friends, I have made my way a little bit further down. This is the Fishy Fishy Cafe area. What a cool name, right? But uh, this area right here was very prominent in the movie. I know what you did last summer. There's a scene in the movie where they have this parade going on, this float, and the queen is on the float, and she is looking for the killer. You know, the man who's killing all the kids in the movie with this big old hook, the fisherman. And they're actually coming right down through here and at one point, she looks up amongst that balcony right there. And I don't think, in, in a movie it was a little bit different. I don't think it had a roof on it. It just had that balcony. And that right there is where the killer was. And he kind of shows his hook. The old fisherman looks at her and brings that hook up and it startles her, you know. And uh, she looks back and he's gone. But yeah, that is. Right there is the location. And I know what you did last summer. All that took place. So that is uh, a little cool, cool history right here. At fishy fishy cafe it smells really good down here might want to come out here and get you some food sometime if you're in there it smells really really good all right my friends now we have left fishy fishy cafe and just come a short little ride around the corner here on west brunswick street the location that i'm actually standing in right now in the movie safe haven was alex's store this is where the store was the store that burns down toward the end of the movie spoiler alert if you've never seen it his store sadly burns down and this is the location where the store used to set right here between these palms and you can actually see some of these palms in the movie but right here it is but this here is the pad where he set and his house alex's house in the movie believe it or not is just right was right across the street from the store as this fan just weirdly just parked right here but uh yeah right here it is this is the uh the house Right here is the house in the movie. I think they have a swing or something out here that Katie is swinging on at the end when she reads the note from his deceased wife. And uh, this is it. You really can't see the bricks and stuff out here no more. As you can see, they got a lot of honeysuckles and stuff growing all over it. But this here is the house used for the filming of Safe Haven. This was Alex's house. So uh, really awesome. And it's so cool. They've uh, The owners of the house have like really kept it looking the same it don't really it ain't changed at all all they're missing is the uh the swing out front here from this big beautiful tree right here look at that thing that is monstrous i'm always a fan of these trees so i always really like them a lot so uh okay we're going to make our way in this direction and we're going to look for a street called short i think it's called short street and that's where we're going to find julie's house the filming locations for julie's house for the movie i know what you did last summer and then the only thing left for me to show you today in this very vlog, we're going to miss some stuff. I ain't trying to show you everything, uh, but 
we're going to go check out Matlock's house after that. So, and then we're going to wrap it all up. I hope you've had fun so far today. I know I've had a good time uh, zooming around town, looking at some stuff. So, uh, let's go ahead and make it down this way and see if we can find, I think it's called Short Street. I, I might have to double check that, but Julie's house is on that road. I have filmed that one before. All right, I've made it. I found it. It is Short Street. Right here, I'm on the corner of Short Street and Brunswick Street. We just come from right up there. We wasn't very far at all. Not even a football field away. Maybe 80 yards. They have some cones out here. This is a one-way street. They don't want people driving up. But you see this uh, kind of, I don't know, like a teal bluish looking house right here. That was Julie's house. Now, real quick, we're going to go up there in front of it and just kind of cruise by and let you take a closer look at it. And then we're going to move on and find Andy Griffith's house that was in town, Ben Matlock's house. And then we're going to wrap his vlog up today. And right there is Julie's house. Very pretty. Definitely a different color than it was in the film. But uh, still looks very epic looking. Awesome house. But it's located right here in the waterfront area at Southport, North Carolina. All right, let's go see if we can find Matlock's house. Ben Matlock's house right here in town. Let's go, let's go hunt it down. Man, check out this cool buoy marker right here in this little park area right here beneath this beautiful tree. You have a nice little gazebo over here. Really nice little area. Some benches out here. And this here is right here on South Lord Street. And if you come to this area and gaze right across the road, that right there is the home that they used for the TV show Ben Matlock. Right there. That was Ben Matlock's house in the show Matlock. That was Andy Griffith's show. He actually starred. He was Ben Matlock. And uh, my dad used to watch that show quite a bit. And uh, pretty pretty awesome uh, little show. I never got into it much, but he was a big fan of it. But I know it's kind of hard to see because it's a big tree. But there are people over there who actually have a little get-together. So I don't really want to pry in on what they're doing. But uh, just from across the road here, you know, give you a quick shot at it. It's here on South Lord Street. You can come by and take a look at this, walk by, just gaze at it for a minute, move on. People are living there, but uh, really cool Andy Griffith history point right here. I didn't even know this was the house. I never really watched the show. So if you ever remember watching the show or if it's still on today on some channel, uh, there's reruns and stuff. Uh, if you ever see this, this home front in the in the TV show, it's located right here in Southport. Tell me if this is right. This on the internet it says this is right, but I never watched the show enough to really know for sure. But supposedly right here in Southport is that said house. All right, my friends. As this ginormous ship goes by, this barge. That will pretty much do it for us today here in Southport. What a great day. Had an awesome time looking at some filming locations, some historical locations in and around town. And we cap it off by watching this big ship go out, this boat. I don't really know if you consider that a ship. Yeah, it is. It's a ship. There's no tugboat pushing that thing, right? Where is it? Or is that all like part of the bargey looking thing? Hard to tell. I don't know a whole lot about this stuff. But I do see them from time to time when they're coming down through here, man. Some of them are way bigger than this. This one ain't nothing. This one's probably empty. You know, some of the other boats come through here. have all these big containers on it. it. Looks like they're stacked like 10 high. They're just monstrous. You can see them on the horizon like 10 miles away. But he's going back out to see whatever he's doing. Pretty cool nonetheless. Hope you enjoyed today's content. I enjoyed making it. Until next time, my friends, I am the Hitchhiking Yeti, and I will see you in my next adventure. Y'all stay safe out there, and I hope to see you in my next adventure. And if you subscribed, you probably will. Wow. One last time. There she goes. Going out to sea. You can hear the motor on that thing. Man, that thing's got some bass to it. Just think how many horsepower it takes is to push that big monstrosity <laughs> through that water. Excellent day. Water's looking pretty clear.
all right, i'm really going now.